G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map, it's the Thunder from Down Under, Yagas. And he is playing the Delhi Sultanate. He's playing in the color blue, opening us up with a mosque and a mill and a house. Who knows whether we're going to see a lumber camp or whether we are going to see a mining camp. But it looks like it's going to be the latter of the two as the mining camp does come out. And, of course, uh, this map is the one, the only, Lippany. Lippany is one of those maps where there's extra berries absolutely everywhere. So you have a look here. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I feel like, and ten. Ten berries. Ten berries. But speaking of ten berries, we're yet to introduce his opponent today. Spawning in on the north side of the map in the color red. Playing the Abbasid Dynasty, the Thunder from Down Under. It is Snooper. Yes, they are both Australian, and yes, they are both the Thunder from down, <laughs> from down Under. That's the best I can give you guys. I don't know what else to go with, because, like, we had, like, Australian sensation, but it just doesn't work. It's It, it just it just doesn't go. I feel like I need to I need to have something else. So it's just it's the Thunder from Down Under is going to be what it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've, we've got ourselves a little bit of a, an Australian matchup right here. Uh, Snooper um, hailing from... I'm going to go, like, rural New South Wales. And Iago's... I'm going to go from, like... You, you know he's a city boy. He's, like... Iago's is, like, a, a, a city boy, like, South Yarra, Melbourne, or, like, Bondi Beach in Sydney. Like, you just know that. Like, oh, gosh. I, I don't know Iago's at all. <laughs> I just I just know Hutt. And I know, like, Hutt is good friends with him. And it's, like, if Hutt's friends with him, then, he, you know, he's got to be, like, one of those... He's got to be one of those guys. But anyway... Let's talk a little bit about this game, what this game is a part of, because this is part of the N4C. So at the moment, you'll see in the top right-hand corner, it's got my uh, logo up there. And that's probably because I just haven't put the N4C logo up there yet. So I will do that. Uh, so any of the, the future casts that you guys see from N4C will probably have that. That's a good good, good, good memory there, Drongo, to remember to do that. Um, but uh, Iago's now going to be picking up a couple of sheep. And you can see him actually being very, very cheeky there, doing a little bit of a... Uh, What's the, what's the word where he, he sort of goes from this one over to that one over to that one? Like, he's he's not bunny hopping them. I guess you could say leapfrogging, but it's not even leapfrogging them uh, and getting them across. But now it looks like the landmark going to be coming down for him. Dome of the Faith going to be the way that he looks to go. And uh, no real surprises there. Three villagers going to be tapping away at that one, getting a very quick age up in. Already... Has he already researched efficient production? God damn, that's quick, isn't it? Jeez Louise, that comes up quickly. Uh, but uh, now going to continue searching out uh, chaining. Thank you very much. Yagos is from Canberra. Really? He's from Canberra? Kitty Z, are you for real? I'm from Canberra. Which part of Canberra is he from? Okay, if... He, you, you know he's in a city, right? Like, he's got to be like, uh, I live in Dixon. Like, <laughs> I'm just kidding, Yagos. All right, man. All right, all right. Uh, gosh. Uh, he probably does live in Dixon, though. It's a big suburb. It's a big suburb. But uh, we'll have a look how uh, how Snooper's doing. Snooper on the other side. Economic wing going to be his choice. Actually got quite a lot of villagers on gold here. I don't know exactly what that is all about. He's just spent a whole bunch of it as well. What is he? Is he going for an early wheelbarrow? He is going for an early wheelbarrow. Very curious decision here for Snooper. Um, now, this is curious. Snooper's investing a lot of resources into his technology early. So he's not going in for... So he's not going in for the 10 um, building production, the Golden Age, which is very, very common with the Abbasid Dynasty. He's not going for a second town center. He's going for the economic wing. So we, we will expect to see fresh food stuffs coming out very shortly, but uh, not gathering up any gold at this point. Really just looking to play heavy... I, I would assume heavy H2 Delhi. Um, or rather heavy H2 Abbasid. Now, the, the thing for me in this situation... So he's going stable. Um... Oh, is he doing professional scouts? Yeah, he's going to be doing professional scouts for sure. Uh, he's got way too many villages on gold for him not to be doing that, especially because he, he could research fresh food stuff by now. So he's going to... Snooper going to be going for professional scouts here. Now, the thing that I'm thinking about is, right, when you're playing the Abbasid Dynasty, and I've talked about this before, in my opinion, they are a very one-dimensional civilization. You've got, in my opinion, one option with them, and, that, and that's double TC. Because that actually gives you the longevity. It, it, it gives you a, a game plan, a win condition throughout the game. 
Uh, looks like horticulture going to be coming in instead of professional scouts uh, for Yagas as well. Um, but yeah, with the Abyssinia Dynasty, you really don't have a lot of variety in your uh, your options as a gamer. And that kind of it kind of hurts because it makes them very predictable so people can see what they're going to do. I say that as a player who just quite literally lost a game to the Abyssinia's Chinese on French Pass. So I should know how predictable they are. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the thing is that they are quite predictable. So it, it's to me, it's quite interesting to see that Snooper is playing this not only um, in a single town center style, but he's going double stable single town center. You can see going for the fresh food stuffs here. Uh, has obviously picked up the wheelbarrow. No professional scouts coming in for him just yet. Uh, so very, very curious. And he's actually gone off gold as well. Uh, so, yeah, this is going to be very interesting. A double stable opening. Now, keep in mind, he's going up against the Delhi. Um, and one of the big things with the Delhi, Yagos will know this, you guys should know this, is that they are all about this research right here, Sanctity. Um, this research was once upon a time available in the first age, was then moved to the second age, um, and uh, it is an incredibly strong research on a map like this. This map has got three sacred sites on it. You've got the one in the middle, one up to the north, one down to the western south side, I guess you could call it. And you're able to take those sacred sites. But the Delhi are able to do it sooner than anybody else because of that research. Now we've got ourselves a little bit of a cav-on-cav -cav battle as Iagos looks to try and uh, run away uh, from the cavalry of his opponent, managing to come out of that stealth forest. And he's going to be continuing to track down towards his base. Spotting out that now, we should see an appropriate response from him being a barracks. Uh, so we'll have to see if he looks to go into that or whether he just looks to stay with it. But one of the things to note is already he's got this efficient production rolling out. So for anybody unfamiliar with the Delhi, the way they work, they can they can actually garrison some of their scholars. So scholars are sort of like the unique uh, religious unit that the Delhi get to make. And they get to make them for extra cheap uh, with this landmark, the Dome of the Faith. Um, and as a result, you can then garrison those bad boys inside your military production buildings. You can see here, one out of one, and that's going to increase the production speed there by 100%. So basically, instead of making this in 22 seconds, you're making it in 11 seconds. And I don't know about you guys, but that's an absolute bargain. Now it looks like we've got Snooper coming out with a very interesting unit. We are seeing the Abbasid Camel strategy beginning. Now you might be wondering what the hell this is all about. Take a look at the debuff. Take a look at my debuff. That that is that could definitely be a song. Uh, so we've got the camel coming out. So this bad boy right here, we're, we're going to ride along with him. We're going to follow along with our our debuffer over here. Our debuffer over here. Our debuffer over here. Okay, take a look at my debuff. It could also be like, take a look at my camel. I think that could also work pretty well. So this bad boy is really going to change the way that the fights happen here. So we've got the camel archer, which causes horse cavalry units. Not just cavalry units, not just horse cavalry unit, or not just horse units, but horse cavalry units to deal 20% less damage. So it doesn't work against elephants, but it does against horses. And now the whole idea behind that is because camels are scary. At least horses think that way. And this guy comes in and look at this. He provides an AOE. There's no way to actually see the AOE. Devs, if you're watching this video, here is my feedback to you. Allow this aura just to provide a, a small decal on the ground so that we know which units are affected by this aura and which ones aren't as we try and make sense of exactly what's going on. But the primary difference you're going to see between these two units is one's got seven attack, one's got nine, and that all comes down to this bad boy right here. Camel Archer's continuing to come out for Snooper. Ladies and gentlemen, we've found our champion, the Thunder from Down Under. Snooper trying his best to get a victory here, but unfortunately, despite having much stronger, sturdier camels, um... It, it turns out that just having more horses is better. <laughs> it's just because it's... Uh, you, if you've got more horses, you just win. Uh, so th th these units are really expensive. They're twice the cost of a horseman. So what would you rather? Two horsemen or like a, a single camel? And it definitely seems like, for the most part, two camels or two horsemen is definitely the way to go. But uh, on the other side of the map, Snooper actually has begun walling. Um, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Snooper. Snooper. How does he do it? You know, I've often wondered this about Snooper. How does he fit a brain the size of a watermelon in the head the size of a walnut? I continue to wonder that. Beautiful preemptive destruction going on right there. And now it looks like this outpost is going to be going down in the middle. And uh, and the, the plays continue. Snooper looking to try and make things work. But look at the production that's coming out here uh, from his opponent. We'll, we'll check in with this and see. He's got two stables at the moment that have gone up. 
But uh, got to be careful. A nice little raid going to be coming in here. The, the question for me is whether these camels are actually going to be of any use. I think one camel is great in this situation, but you just want to keep massing up horsemen and then maybe even head in towards... Um, go in towards uh, spears. But take a look at this right here. He's trying his best, Snooper, to hold on, but unfortunately not having a lot of luck. The, the camel's getting grouped there with the horsemen and unfortunately getting run down by the horsemen and just... Are the camels even worth it? I think is the question that we've got to be asking. And it definitely seems like at this point, no, they are not. We'll have a look over at Snooper's side and see what he's got coming out. Finally, a few spears are going to be coming out. But my fear is it might be too little too late. A single camel archer with some spears definitely could have worked here. But now it sounds like down towards the south, we've got a two-on-one situation. Horseman still managing to make it alive and up towards the north now. Snooper continuing to lose units as he fights and tries to get these spears to get their pikes out. Unfortunately, not having a lot of luck as they do take down. And you can see one of those horsemen running in the air. All the uh, horse archers have gone down and it's an overwhelming victory right now for Iago's the Australian sensation. The, sorry, the, the thunder from down under. It is Iago's. And this is part of the N4C tournament. Is Iago's going to be able to take the victory here? It definitely seems that way. There's a lot of horsemen out right now. I'll say that much. Gosh, that is a lot of horsemen. That is 16 horsemen, dude. Calm down with the horsemen. Jeez Louise. So he's got he's got two stables, but he's got two scholars in them, which means that essentially it's like four stables. It's absolutely wild. Wild. Now capturing up two sacred sites. Third sacred site going to be captured any second as well. You can see him actually able to neutralize the unit that's on that site. And uh, now going to continue chasing through his opponent's base. And you can see how effective these horsemen are underneath the town center doing a great job here. Do we need to potentially see a buff to horseman archer, uh, horseman armor? Definitely not. Snooper tapping out. Yago's victorious. And we get to see the thunder from down under crashing through to a ferocious victory. A very short game, but a good game. Uh, and we definitely did see that uh, Camel Archers, not all that they cracked up to be. Quick look at the timelines. Village accounts, very stagnant. Military accounts, as you would expect. Yago's just miles ahead. Fellas, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you check out M4C. I'll leave a link in the description. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.